Ready? Let's get started. And grab your blocks if you have them in a strap. Let me just buzz somebody else in who's trying to get in the in the room. Okay. I think the game's all here. So I'll start class by telling you what I was dreaming last night. <laughs> this is what happens when you teach yoga. So I had this dream that I was giving a demonstration and I was walking around saying, look, everybody, I've discovered a new way to become weightless. And I was kind of walking around and saying that the first thing you had to do is to just let your joints become loose and relaxed and then to breathe into your body as if you're breathing into a helium balloon. And while I didn't fly around the room, I was like 10% of my body weight. I was doing tumbles in midair without actually touching the ground much. And this one of these dreams where I actually felt the sensations in my memory, my limbic memory. And I remember thinking, when I wake up, I really have to try this because it's so wonderful. <laughs> so I mentioned this dream because in a lot of systems of movement, whether you're talking about ballet or yoga or Tai Chi, there is this quest for lightness. Because as you sit here listening to me give my spiel, you probably feel the effects of gravity. And those effects can take the body form into unsavory places and postural propositions which are not very healthy. So we use yoga or any movement modality to try and lift off, to try and become a little more weightless. So having said that, grab your strap for a second. And if you don't have a strap, maybe you can grab a long towel, you're gonna to just take it behind your back like you just came out of the shower like this and scrub along the tips of the shoulder blades. You have a long strap, you've got the strap in your between your thumb and your index finger, and maybe you can extend your arms out of it so one starts to straighten out like this. And your right arm extends like that. And you just take a few breaths to breathe into the right lung, which opens up the whole right rib cage. And you can raise that arm up to the sky on the diagonal and Feel the action of the shoulder blade moving away from the spine at the top and into the spine. And then you come down and then scrub your back a little bit more. And you could use a towel if you want to be pretending you're coming out of the shower and then you, whoosh, your left arm comes out. You can inhale, sit up tall with the helium of the prana, the breath coming into the right or the left rib cage rather mirroring you and you feel how the structure of the breath elevates eventually the arm comes up as a an extension of the breath the lung or the rib and the whole use of the breath for lifting purposes so let's try that a little bit and if you're a pranayama nerd i'm not going to call people out but you know who you are <laughs> Inhale through the right nostril. Exhale, come to center through the left. Inhale through the left. Otherwise, don't worry about the side to side, just inhale, extend, maybe lift a little this time, and exhale. And this is our pranayama with A string attached. Inhale, fill, lift. The whole spine lifts from the oxygen tank, if you will, of 
of that lung. Inhale. Maybe hold the top of the inhalation. Over you go. Up you go. And release. Two more. Inhale. Lift off, keeping the sit bones as your ballast. And inhale. Ah, like a big yawn. And then release. Before we go any further, take the strap aside, place the hands down, and find your location of your sit bones. Close your eyes and just feel your wings. Feel your lungs, your shoulder blades now, hopefully, a little bit more actualized. And then we're going to come out of this for a second to Virasan, sitting on our shins, and you're going to take one of your blocks, maybe two, and put it in front of you or put them in front of you on the flat level. I'm going to attempt to use one, which is fairly narrow. And what we're going to do now is open up the arms a little more in the triceps. We're going to say our prayers. We're going to come to kneel and walk the feet back a little bit and the knees back. Pretty close together. We're going to put our elbows on that block. So watch first. I'm going to clap my hands together. I'm going to face plan. I'm going to go to the massage table of my biceps and just place my sides of my face into my biceps. And then I'm going to again walk the knees back so they're over the hips. Take a big inhale to lengthen the arms forward, the upper arm bones, and exhale. Start to sit down. Just gently draw your belly into your spine and breathe. So you don't have to jam your hips down here. Just think of extending the spine, especially the mid-back. And if you want, you can straighten your arms forward and lay the crown of your head, the hairline rather, on the edge of the block. And keep breathing into those lungs. Keep lengthening the rib cage, the lats, the triceps. Some people are tempted to drop the head through the arms. I tend not to recommend that just because of the stress on the back of the shoulder joint. Carefully come up by pushing your elbows into the block. Take one hand to the side of the block, the other hand to the side of the block. Then we're gonna walk back and to Virasan, you can use one of your blocks to sit on if Virasan doesn't feel good for you. Now we're going to take the strap again and take it behind the back and do a twin lift. So back to the shower. And now we're going to hoist up both sets of ribs. And if you don't have a towel or a strap, you could hook your thumbs into your armpits, nobody's watching, and lift like a New Hampshire farmer. I don't know why I picked on New Hampshire farmers, but lift your suspenders of your upper rib cage up. But I like the strap because it picks up the shoulder blade tips, and up I come. And then I breathe here in extension. And keep a little bit of your tailbone down onto the block or the hips. If you want extra credit, you lift off of your block. Now I'm thinking of my dream of getting weightless. Ah, make the head float up a little bit, but be careful if you have any neck issues. I know a few of you do. And then to come down, you just point your hands forward and release. Can we do that a few times? Inhale, the arms come up, lifting the body. And partly through the use or encouragement of the strap, partly through the filling of the lungs, the back ribs. 
a mild extension, a mild yawn, and then push forward like you're doing high plank with a strap assist, and down you go. And you get the picture. And I'm trusting you to be a little bit careful with your low back in terms of not going hog wild here and dropping back. And into a back bend just yet. It's a little too early in class. Why? First of all, sit, close your eyes, and enjoy the prana. So this gets into the second part of the picture in terms of yoga. And we also have downward energy to save ourselves. Gravity can be good. That's mostly the lower body work. So now that we've opened up the upper body a little bit, now we have to go into the core and the lower body and experience the, the beneficial effects of what's called upon or grounding energy. Some of this is repeat from yesterday, but let's go down onto our backs, take a block with you. Take the block either width-wise or even narrower between your knees. Really go narrow. A little more between the knees and the hips. Bridge pose. You're going to do five rounds, but they're going to be progressively higher. So inhale, arch the low back. Roll the shoulder blades back. Get the shoulder blades tucked under. Exhale, flat the spine a little. Squeeze the block. The inner thighs and just lift up. Maybe two or three inches, gauging your abdominals. Maybe you can brush your hands from your low ribs to your pelvis and tuck in your frontal ribs. And then you come down. Inhale, look back behind you like an opening, the prana basket, the lightness in the chest that we had with the strap. Exhale, we wrap the frontal ribs together, we squeeze the block, come up. So you get the picture and I'm gonna let you flow five to 10 times. And if you're not getting the picture, roll up to the side and watch what I'm doing. And all I'm doing is engaging what we call Mula Bandha or deep core, deep sacral core around the sacrum and the tailbone, using the block and the inner thighs to squeeze the block, to squeeze the outer glutes, and this is our gravitational weight belt, if you will. A couple more, and you can stay up and breathe, but you want to relax the throat chakra, shoulders, if you do. Now, if I had a strap under my back, so we started class with, imagine how that would feel. And some of you can try this, but let's Come down for a second, and before we do, pull our knees into our hands and get that low back feeling happy, perhaps a little too much extension, even in bridge pose. We'll place the feet down, let the arms come out to the sides, still on your back, inhale, and exhale, go ahead and drop the knees to the left, and start to just push that right knee forward on the diagonal. While you're laying your, your legs over to the left, the left knee may be on the ground, you're gonna push and stretch that psoas, which is part of your weightless gear in the inner right leg, pushes away. And now the right arm starts to reach overhead so that we stretch and bring both prana and apana into the right side. And you can even look to your left as you do this. Lop onto your back for plunk. Inhale the knees to center, remembering the essence of squeezing the block and bridge pose that we just did. And then exhale, release the knees with widely spread feet over to the right. Start to action the Left knee, pushing it away from you. It's gonna bring the left hip off the ground and that left arm swings overhead to 12 noon as you continue to roll right 
and lengthen with your breath, lengthen with your attenuation of your left knee pushing away, the whole left side of the body. So you get the picture, and we'll do it a few times, and if you're confused, roll off to the side, watch. This is a classic fun thing that I've done with all of you in the past. But again, keep a little bit of that inner thigh with the Banda action. Go at your own pace and do each side equally. The leg action pushes first, and then the arm follows suit. Okay, and then take your hands, coming back to bridge, take your hands and clasp behind your skull, just in case there are any imperfections in the pose. Inhale, roll your tailbone forward, arching your low back. Exhale, roll it back toward you. Just float the head up an inch, cradle by the hands. Just lengthen the back of the neck. Drop the head down, the skull. Inhale, the hips roll forward. The chest lifts. You can even push your elbows into the floor and roll the chin to the sky. Exhale, chin to chest, flat back in the ground, and just float the head up two inches. Not trying to jam the, the neck at all, I'm trying to lengthen the back of the neck, the cervical spine, give it a nice traction. If there's someone we're gently pulling on the skull bones. Okay. And extra credit, folks, once the heads come up, reach the arms forward and return the hands to the skull, lay it down, and let's hold the knees again. Go to a happy baby pose, and you can do this with your strap, and you can take the strap around your feet. Even if you don't need to, it's nice. And you think like you're a horsewoman riding on a Maybe a donkey instead of a horse, because it's pretty wide. And then roll your sacrum forward. Just gently hang on to the straps with long arms. Engage your abdominal core. Inhale, roll to the left. Exhale to center. Inhale, roll to the right. And just waking up your obliques. Be playful. You make circular actions now, rolling on the plate-sized area of the sacrum. Those folks that would like to straddle split out, you can take the strap wider and split the legs apart like an old-fashioned TV antenna, rabbit ears. Look at your toes and open them, open the arches of the feet. Open the knee joints, open the hip joints, expand without the pounding effect of gravity on the hip joints. Expand out, and again, a little core exercise for you. You're going to pull the core to the strap to take the legs up to center again, and we're going to drop the right foot out of the strap. So only the left leg is extended forward, and you have the option now of sliding your right leg along the mat and looking up at your left foot. You can inhale, pull the left knee toward the left shoulder, and exhale, straight. Now, if you came to class without props, and a few folks that haven't been coming to class I see came in, you could be just holding the knee and then the back of the leg as you bend and straighten. And then at last, you straighten the left leg all the way up, just as we reached our arms to the sky singly at the beginning of the class, we bring our breath energy through that left leg. We gather the strap ends into the left arm, and exhale, open out to the left. Just enough to feel the inner leg get a little opening, and the outside of the left leg get a little contraction. Inhale the center, and bring the right foot to join. 
It's a partner. You can have your knees bent, doesn't matter. And then we switch legs. Left foot goes down, maybe slides long, creating a right angle. Look at your right toes. Extend out of the right hip, knee, owns the feet. Weightlessness in the joints or anti-gravitational extension of the leg. Inhale, bend right knee a little bit. Exhale, extend. Using the breath as a pump. And the leg is merely mirroring the action of the breath or working with it. And then you extend your right leg as fully as you can. Take the strap ends into your right hand. Inhale, exhale, keeping length of the leg, take it out to the right. And if you're cursed with flexibility, then if you get down to the ground, make sure you keep the heel lifted. The toes can go down, but we use some external rotation of the hip to keep length in that right low back. These are cues for the advanced students and more beginning students, never fear, it's okay. And then we bring the feet back collectively into the strap again. And we take a forward fold on our backs. So you can bend your knees for a second and roll your sacrum forward. So now you're looking at your feet and holding on to the strap ends like a water skier. Inhale and exhale, straighten the legs collectively, pushing into the strap, pushing out into the outer edges of the feet a little. Inhale, bend, flipping your chin. Exhale, straight. Now you do both legs pogo sticking. And as you straighten those legs, see if you can roll the spines of the shoulder blades back. So we're getting a nice hamstring stretch without the worry of gravity. And of course, the show offs of the class can roll up to bound Navasan on the next way station. Inhale, bend your knees and come up. Exhale, straighten. I know that everybody did this. I don't even have to watch. But those that deigned to be modest, come to seated for a second, and we'll do two things. The first thing we'll do is we'll keep our strap handy, but we'll lay it down. The next thing we'll do is to take our block again. And again, you can go narrow or wider, depending on your body. And we'll lay our hands back like we're at the beach. Now we're gonna lift and open the chest on inhale. Exhale, we're gonna pull those frontal ribs in. Inhale, we're gonna, again, open the chest, moving our shoulder blades tips into the spine. Exhale, we're going to keep that, but we're going to collect the lower ribs and the core in. So this is subtle working of the lift and opening think of the blossom of the upper body. And then the groundedness on the exhale as I squeeze the block. And Alvin knows where I'm going. As I squeeze, maybe I lift my feet up. Inhale, open, exhale, maybe squeeze, collect the low ribs, maybe straighten the legs. Now don't struggle as you do this, just play with the, the primary action. Oh, let's do about 200 of these. Maso menos. Just kidding, okay. So let's do... <laughs> Let's do a Bhattakonasan to counter the effects of squeezing the heck out of the inner thighs and we're gonna take the knees apart. A lot of people can't do full Bhattakonasan because of their, their knees don't go to the ground like that. So you can take your blocks under your knees and push into the blocks. And I can use my strap, some of you don't need it, to collect the bound feet, soles of the feet together. I'm gonna, to, once again, 
bring prana into the pose, lifting both sets of ribs. But then the apana comes in on the exhale and I push the legs into the block. and just move with the breath so that there's no, no such thing as static. The inhale and the exhale are migrating through the body and almost like the double churning action of a washing machine. If you've ever opened your washing machine and seen the chug, chug, chug back and forth, you're cleaning your innards with these two simple actions. You're also getting really strong. So much so that you can lean back on the next inhale, chest lift, and exhale, lift the feet off the ground. Put them down, inhale, lift the chest, exhale, frontal ribs come up, pelvic floor comes up, feet come up, and now start to experience a little bit what I did in the dream, and that is weightlessness through the twin efforts of prana and apana. And of course, the advanced students know that with the successful merging of these two, straightening the legs in the bound navasana that I promised is now entirely possible for some. Inhale, you come back down, you release. Before we travel on to our Hands and knees again, spread your feet wide and hang out for a second. Lift your chest. Now drop your knees over to the left. It's the same movement we did on our backs, but now we're upright. Now what did we do? We started to push with, in this case, when the knees are to the left, we pushed with the right knee. So it's pushing on the diagonal that way. And then it launches the right arm behind. Come back to center, inhale, the knees come up, exhale, they go to the right, and I push through the inner left leg, and up comes the sail of the left arm. And you can see where I'm going, and if you have any injuries or restrictions, maybe the arm gets all the way to the ground. But just flow a little bit without overdoing the attenuation and spiral playfully. The legs start the process and the arms, if you want to err, err on the side of the arms and the ribs being expansive and light. Okay, so let's come to our hands and knees and we'll take our blocks once again. Sit in Virasana to watch. I'm going to take the block between my legs now. And I want to do a little bit of core work, hands and knees. So I'm going to walk the knees together. It's really the same action as we did in bridge. This time with the toes tucked under, I do a cat and cow. First comes the cow, the arch. That's the pranic lift that we had when we had the strap, lifting our shoulder blades up the back, opening our collarbones. Now we pull the frontal ribs and squeeze the block and just lift those knees two inches. Come down with the knees, inhale, look forward. Exhale, squeeze and lift, just two inches. So everybody jump into the game here. And I want you to just find the essence and the objective is not to punish the body or create pain, but to create weightlessness, to create lift off. So make it more subtle and then come down into your house and have a seat again. Take that block in the hands as we did on Monday and squeeze it. Then we're gonna bend the elbows down like we're doing dolphin. As we inhale, we start to straighten the arms on the diagonal. We exhale, we just isometrically squeeze that block, bring it down to our eye level. Inhale, exhale. This great for shoulder injuries. It's gonna hug those upper arm bones in. 
advanced folks. Pretend you're a kite now. The kite starts to fly away from you, picks your chest up. Wow. And then exhale, what happens when you squeeze? Those frontal ribs come in. Mulavana comes on board. Whoa, here comes the kite. Feels really nice, but then the tail, the string of the kite brings you back down to earth. Wow, that feels good. And then, <laughs> so does that. And you really feel integration. So now you choose, if you're more earthbound this morning, you reach up, now you're gonna bend your elbows. You did this tricep stretch on the block. Remember we put the elbows down on the block? But now we take the, the block behind the head and just tuck the chin a little bit. Rain in the front ribs. So some of you are working here, bring the elbows together, stretch the triceps again. Others fly up, come back, block behind head and push. Now you can start to take a little more of that back bend by lifting up the mid back and safely extend the gaze to the sky. And come down. One more, one more. Again, you can be here. You can just stay here and you're working safe. Or up comes the prana, and then on board the up on the pelvic lift. Very good. How about a down dog with blocks? Now we already experienced the block between the, neck, the legs, lifting the knees, and then now we can try extending into full downward dog, squeezing our block. We're going to float our chests up rather than trying to push them down. We're going to come to high play briefly. Bend the knees and come down. Sit down into Virgasan and then we repeat. So watch again. All of the two principles of palm and prana. The objective is to get a more weightless downward dog in the upper body. I come forward, tuck my toes under. I inhale, float the ribs forward, float the collarbones forward. I want to keep that essence. Now I'm Squeeze the block, take the legs back. I can look at my toes, but I keep lifting the armpits up as if the strap were behind the shoulder blades. Come forward to high plank, keeping the bond and come down. So I'm going to invite you into this little flow. Downward dog should feel like Urdhva Hastasana when you get it right. Fly forward. Toes under, lift, exhale, squeeze, and draw the hips back. You can keep your knees bent, it's fine. One more round. I know I'm working you hard. Remember, it's all for the reach of the arms should be intact, and the shoulder joints are saved from despair by the use of the block to engage the pelvic floor. So you did that and you're like, yeah, Dan, but I'm still feeling kind of human. What a drag. Here's what you do. <laughs> I'm gonna take your two blocks forward. Now be careful that they're, they're not too wobbly. If it's the case, start flat. And you're going to take hands and knees with the blocks. And your hands are on the blocks. You're going to heel of your palm on the back edge. And then you can even cup or grab the block. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, toes under. And now we come to full downward dog with hands on blocks. You can bend your knees, lift your chest, and then try to straighten the legs. You can try the same sequence we did earlier, or just hold your downward dog. 
And this is going to give you a little more loft into the upper body reach. Okay, let's come up to either from down dog or from kneeling to a forward fold with hands on blocks. You can take them as high as you need. You can bend your knees and you can just drop your head. And if you've got a lot of flexibility, you can flatten the blocks or dismiss them. You walk the blocks on the outside of the feet and back. Then your knees come up through chair pose. And then standing. So remember that exercise we did with the walk moments ago when we took it in the forearms. Now we're going to do a little bit of that again. And we're going to take the block and create right angle forearms. And what, what are you really doing here anatomically? You're, you see this thing in the gym where people do this. You're engaging the anterior serratus right here on the side of the arms. It's really great for plank. And then we're going to drop down and challenge ourselves now with the Ukatasan bent legs. So now we're in a little carpus or knitting the carpus of the ribs. And then see if you can just relax and breathe. Inhale, you're going to straighten the legs, reach the arms overhead. And I'm going to suggest a diagonal pattern at first rather than trying to go back like that. Exhale, you're going to squeeze the knees and just squeeze the body. This is all we're going to do. We're going to lift. We're going to lift out of our hip joints, knee joints, all the joints, the vertebra, and then we're going to collect. Ah, inhale, exhale. You don't have to squeeze the heck out of the block. But now as we reach up and exhale, come down, we're going to just turn the chest over to the left like that. Then we can lower the block down, tap, down our left leg, come back to center, inhale, up you go. Exhale, collect. Rotate to right, extend the arms down, pull them up, rotate back to center. And you can see what I'm doing. I've made it mechanical, but you can flow now. Inhale, exhale, rotate, extend. Any permutations? And once you get the attenuation, Reduce it, which may sound like bad advice. Like, wait, I found this strength and I really want to grind it. You don't want to grind it. You want to now float and have attenuation merged with relaxation. Zero super. Now we come up with the block. Now we bend the elbows again, take the block behind the head. Now we push the frontal hip bones forward, try to keep the ribs somewhat dropping, and take the head back. Ah, and then release. Step back to warrior one with the left foot. Inhale, extend. Exhale, gather. So you got the back heel down, and that's fine. You want extra credit as you pull in with your forearms, lift the back heel, bend the back knee, tap down. Inhale, straighten. Here comes the kite, weightlessness, and then groundedness. So I'm going to leave it up to you what you can manage. Maybe you just micro it. How do you get out of this mess? So the next time you pull in, you bend the back knee, step your feet together, and release. Let's take a little counter move. Take the block behind the back. And I want you to be careful. 
with your shoulder and you're just going to bend your elbows and squeeze the block and push it into your sacrum. Let your sacrum push into the block. Lengthen out of the lumbar. Hug the muscles of the legs into the bones of the legs. Okay, that's just in case you have too much arch in your low back. But here we go again. Up comes the block, down goes the knees. And then come up and step your right foot back. And here you are like a boxer. See how boxers hold their arms? They're really pulled into this strength of the anterior serratus. But we're not exactly boxers, we're self-referential martial artists. <laughs> we're, we're going against ourselves. But inhale, we're gonna, again, I love the diagonal, push into the back heel, you know, reach the arms forward. Exhale, we're gonna rein it in, we're gonna bend back knee a little bit, we're gonna go into our boxer stance. Inhale, length, exhale. Anatomists know that all we're doing is engaging in concentric contraction and then eccentric. Want to go deeper? Lift your back heel. Dip. Straighten. Dip. And the exhale. Straighten. Dip. And I'm leaving it up to you to be safe. And how do you get out of it? You pull the block in, you bend the back knee, step the feet together, you release. Take that block to your low back, push it into your sacrum, bend your elbows, lift your chest. Okay, let's uh, take the block away for a second and just try that Similar sequence without the block. You want to use your props as a means to an end. So that now you, as you come into Ukatasan, you have the essence of inner thigh squeeze. And then as you bring your arms down as if you had the block, you have the essence of the structure of the arms. The left foot goes back. The arms reach up into your best quality, warrior one. Easy, right? Let's open up to warrior two. Let's take the hands behind the back and grab the interlaced fingers together. Just lift the chest open, inhale. Ah, but wait. As you straighten the front leg, how's the low back feeling? And exhale, bend. Straighten and bend. And as you bend, I want you to think about dropping anchor into the tailbone and taking a little bit of the, if there's any frontal rib opening, so probably is try to mitigate that. You can do a little bit of it by keeping the elbows bent. And then best quality warrior two, you're gonna take the backs of your hands and push them into your inner thighs. You're gonna push your pelvis into your hands. Reverse warrior, inhale, side angle, exhale. Now, if that block is handy, you can use it outside the foot for your right hand. And if you use the block, come up and take it with you. Set up for triangle, reaching your right arm high with the block. Have a little rotation of the right arm as if you're coming across the body like that micro rotation and then dive in, place the block down, left hand sidles up to the left hip and lengthen. So what's going on here in Trikonasana? Same thing I've been saying all class. We've got the inner thighs apart. They're still trying to magnetize. And then we're still trying to breathe those ribs up and forward, right through the crown of the head. But if that's not good enough, that's hard for you as you reach up to the sky with the left hand. You nod your chin to your chest, you take your left hand in the back of your skull as we did with the block, and you gently push the back of the skull into the hand and maybe rotate your gaze to the left elbow. 
stretching, lengthening the spine, and then nodding the chin down, releasing your gaze down to your front big toe mat, bend into the front knee. Now, you're either going to reach forward with your block and hop into Ardha Chandrasana, or you just bring the feet together. I'm going to leave this up to you. Block would be forward of the right foot and out to the side, the right side. Look down to start. Pull the frontal ribs in. Maybe you can come all the way into the pose before you finally bring the feet together, bend the knees, and relax the head into a shape. Let's take a pot of misosity to pluck on your big toes, feet wide, drop your hips, lengthen your spine, go flat back, and fold. Even as you fold and you attempt to straighten the legs, you have the essence of squeezing the block between the inner thighs. It's still there. Release your toes, bring your feet together, and your knees come up through chair pose. And then standing. Other side. Ukatasan. And imagine you've got the block between the hands. The Ashtangis, of course, bring the palms together because they don't use blocks. But we can go wide and just imagine our hands on a block. And now from here, we're going to step our right foot back. Exhale, we take the boxer stance. And then we're going to pivot open to warrior two. From here, we're going to bind the hands behind the back, and we're going to inhale, straighten the front leg, lift the armpit ribs, exhale, ground. The tailbone goes down, you can feel your thumbs pushing into your sacrum to reground the lower body so that the low back doesn't get too arched. You just move playfully, bending your joints, bend your elbows. And then you're going to take the backs of the hands and the inner thighs, push the hips into them. Reverse warrior now, left arm up. Exhale, side angle. So you can use the modification, or with your handy dandy blocks, you can take a high block outside that left foot, take full pose. If you have a block, you bring it with you to come up and set up for trikonasana. The left arm up and rotating in a little. And then take the block outside that front leg, build the pose. If your upper body is still kind of wonky, tuck your chin, slide your right hand behind your back of your skull and press the back of the skull long. Take your right hand, your hip, look down. Now you can slide the block forward, take a little hippy hop with the right leg up to Ardha Chandrasana. Or just bring the feet together and forward fold, which is where we'll eventually gather. I'm just going to grab my water while you forward fold. Take a good five or six breaths. And again, the blocks are great for forward fold in that if you're stiff or your proportions are such that it's tough for you to get to the ground, the blocks are there for you. They eventually walk back deeper. Now we're going to take the feet apart and we're going to squat down and we're going to take a block and make sure it's not too squishy and pretend you're an empress, which 
easier for some to do, but should always be done from time to time. You sit on your throne and admire the crowds stowing gifts upon you. Now, Malasan is generally what I do here, but having a block is advantageous for many reasons. One, it relaxes the joints and the hips, and you can hang your arms down in your legs and have a better sense of what I began class with, which is a kind of an effervescent weightlessness. The block is your grounding wire, like the lightning rod is grounded into the earth. And you can still work the pose here. Now, if you want to bring your feet in a little closer and rest your elbows on top of your knees and bring your palms together and gently press down to lengthen the spine, that's fine. If you want to fly into a crow pose, be my gut. I'm going to show you a complex and a easy pose from here. So, those folks that don't have blocks, by the way, you could be sit sitting in a chair. What we're going to do is attempt to bring the hands down, and I've got a second block here. And like a frog, or like an approach to crow, I'm just going to place the hands down. And I'm going to hug my knees to my upper triceps. So I've got the, the best value, and I want you to do this in such a way that you don't strain. You're hugging your inner legs in a wide-spaced forearm. But you've got the lungs and the breath lifting the chest and the rib cage away from the descending pelvis. The sit bones are pressing into the, the block. And you're getting a nice stretch here. And that could be the ticket. But one of the, it's called Titi Basan, a little hummingbird, kind of fun for those down in Guatemala watching hummingbirds come to their flowers. We're not going to come into full Titi Basan, most of us, but we could, some of us, try to do partial. What does that mean? And I want you to be careful that you can watch. It means I start to lift my hips off the block and I Grab my heels so my arms go in my inner legs, I drop my head, keep hugging my upper arms, and I start to straighten my legs a little. Why is this a good thing to do? Then you can come down and literally give it a rest. I want you to watch your low back for anybody that's attempting this. Because the up pressure in the forward fold is going to Strengthen your back extensors. So once again, you could be working here. Take your block a little forward. Hug your knees into your arms. Neck is long. Or you're coming up. And in the more advanced pose, the feet start to walk in. The shoulders start to go underneath each set of legs. I'm just showing you for the sake of... And I get some... The knees are actually helping the mula bandha, the upon is helping the prana lift and lengthen the rib cage. Oh boy, way too much work. And look at that. I'm almost out of time. So we sit, we do a few more postures like forward fold. And once again, the blocks come into play. You come halfway forward, you bend your knees and push down into your blocks like this. And all you're doing is trying to lift and lengthen. Exhale, maybe you slide the blocks forward a little, bend your knees, lift your chest. And then exhale, inhale, rein it in. Exhale, let it out. And then be 
careful on the way back to walk your blocks back and you're ready to rest. Shavasana or a final chest opener with a block. I think we did it on Monday. We take the flat block behind us, take our hands behind us, bend our knees, lift our hips forward a little, and we glide our shoulder blade tips, bottoms, onto the block, capture our skull with our forearms together in a much like the boxer's pose I had you do. And then you slowly exhale, guide back your skull if you can to the mat. If it gets there and you feel safe and not crunchy, slide one leg long, you slide the other leg long. If the back of the skull is there, you can do any number of things. You can reach your arms back behind you. I've got a wall I can push into. I can bind my opposite elbows. But you keep Mula Bamba, you keep the hips together as if there were a block there, even if you extend your legs. To come out, you roll off to the side safely. On Friday, I'm going to show you a wonderful pose for the hips, and I'll give you the preview to tempt you. Blocks on the diagonal create a cradle for the hips. You can hold the block straight in your legs, similar to what we just did, and get a wonderful opening in the sacrum. So that'll be on the docket for Friday. And that's just a teaser to get you to come to class. Otherwise, Shavasana, shake the limbs, shake the spine, nod the head, relax as long as you like, and I'll close off for those that need to go places, palms to heart, 